Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Loves Data. In this video, I'm covering a tip from my community. Andy Simpson points out that Google Data Studio is a great way to visualize data from Google Search Console. He says it's a great way to make the data more appealing. So let's take a look at how we can make our Google organic search data more engaging with the help of Data Studio. Let's get started. Here's the Google Search Console report we're going to make using Google Data Studio. I'll briefly walk through the elements included in the report before we cover the steps you'll need to follow in order to create the report yourself. We can quickly see the trends based on clicks through to our website, broken down by the different devices people are using. Coming down in the report we have scorecards, or straight metrics for our Google Search Console report. This allows us to see the total number of clicks, impressions, click-through rate and average position at a glance. We can also see these metrics in comparison to the previous period. This allows us to see key changes in the metrics. In this example, we can see that impressions are up, while clicks, click-through rate and average position are all down. Below the scorecards, we can see we have timelines, allowing us to quickly see the trends for each of these metrics. This allows us to identify changes that are occurring for our website. For example, here we can see that the click-through rate has seen a sudden increase while impressions have seen a decrease. There's a geographic breakdown of the location of people searching and a quick snapshot of the top search queries people have entered into Google to find our website. This allows us to see the importance of our top search queries. The data here tells us that our top search query is resulting in almost a quarter of all clicks through to our website. There's also a second page in the report. We can head to page two. This gives us a more detailed view of the different search queries people are entering on Google to find our website in search results. We can see at the top we have the scorecard repeated from the previous page and then coming down we have more granular detail about the search queries people are using. We can see the individual search queries along with the clicks, impressions, click through rate and average position for each of these. A comparison is also included which allows us to quickly identify changes at the individual query level within the report. For example, we can quickly see increases and decreases for click through rates of the different queries. The report also includes a heat map where the deeper green indicates a higher clicks rate for that particular query. We can also see average position has a deeper red for queries that have a lower average search position. We can browse through all of the different queries on the bottom right hand corner of the report and at the top of the report we can change the date range. So this is the Google Search Console report we're going to create. Keep watching if you want to learn all the steps you need to create the report and to become more familiar using Google Data Studio. If you are in a hurry though, you can also grab a copy of the report in the description below. Let's head into Google Data Studio and click on Start a New Report. From here, I'm going to select my data source. You're free to pull in Search Console data from your own website, but for this example, I'm going to use the sample data. This is also a great way to play with Data Studio if you're just getting started or want to try something new. I'm going to click on Sample Search Console data and I'm going to add it to my report. Now I can start building the report we just saw. I'm going to start by adding in the area chart which included the different device breakdowns. I'm just going to click on Area Chart and I'm going to add this to my report. I can see that the sample data has already been loaded and it's automatically showing me the different devices people are using to find my website. Now I can add in my scorecards. So I'm going to click on Scorecard and drag it to the right size. I can see I have clicks now. I'm also going to select Comparison and then Previous Period, which allows me to quickly see changes in my data. Now I can copy this scorecard and I can select metric and change clicks to impressions. Now I can copy it again and I'm going to select metric and click through rate. Now I copy it again and select metric and average position. So now I have my top level metrics and the changes for those metrics. Next, I'm going to add in my timelines, so I'm going to select on time series.
and we can see this is automatically pulling in clicks. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to change clicks to impressions. I'm going to copy this again, and select impressions and change it to click-through rate. And again I'm going to copy and paste this one and change click-through rate to average position. So now I have trend lines included in my report. Now I'm going to add in the map of where people are located. I'm going to select GeoMap and drag it onto my report. And that's automatically set to clicks, which is great. Finally, on this page, I'm going to add in the top search queries as a donut chart. I select pie chart and I add it to my report. Now I change the dimension to query. We can see that there is some unavailable keyword data. So I'm going to come into data and I'm going to click on add filter because I only want to see keywords that are known. I name my filter, remove unknown queries, then select exclude and query. And equal to, leaving the value as blank and clicking save. Now you can see that we're excluding any unknown queries from the chart. I can make some adjustments to the appearance of the chart. I'm going to select style and I'm going to turn it into a donut. I'm also going to adjust the color for the other group so that it's gray. I changed the last color to do this. Now I have my top queries included in the report. I can also add a date range to my report and I'm going to set the default date range to the last 30 days and click apply. So that's the first page in my report. Now I'm going to create the second page. Before I create the new page, I'm going to copy the top level metrics because I want them repeated in the second page. Now I select add a page. I can now paste the scorecards into my new page. Next, I'm going to add a date range selector like I did for the first page and select 30 days as the default. Now I'm going to create a new table. After selecting table, I drag it to the right size. This one is going to be larger because I'm going to include the top 25 queries in the report. I click on device category and change this to query. Then I'm going to add in the metrics. I already have queries, but I'm going to select impressions, then click back, and select a new metric of click-through rate and then click back and select a new metric of average position. Now I have all four metrics available from Google Search Console. I select previous period for the comparison. And I'm going to have to adjust my table rows just so I can see all the data clearly in the report. So I adjust them to the right sizes. And now I can change the rows per page to 25. Next, it's time to adjust the style. Looking for my columns for click through rate and average position, so that will be the third and fourth columns. Starting with column three, I select heat map and adjust the color to green. And for column three, I select heat map and this time I'm going to adjust the color to red because we want to be highlighting average positions that are lower in the search results. And now I've created the foundations for my reports. Next, I can go in and tweak the design to match my reporting style. So that's how we can use Google Data Studio to make data from Google Search Console more engaging. Data Studio even allows to import other sources of data, including Google Analytics and Google AdWords. If you haven't already, then check out my tutorial where I show you how to create dashboards using data from Google Analytics. And I'd love to know how you're using Data Studio. Share your tips in the comments below. I'll see you next time.